TIS 100. Oh boy. So, <laughs> there are certain Zachtronic games that I figure I can probably handle doing a series on, and certain ones where I don't think I can handle doing a series on them. Uh, and this is one of those ones. Uh, stuff like the alchemy one. I just really am an oh, Opus Magnum. I'm like, really, I'm going to forget the name the moment I start talking. Opus Magnum and Finifactory Space Chem. I could see myself covering those all the way through sometime. In fact, I've played a few hours of Space Chem years ago and it seemed neat. And I was like, okay, cool. It's like, it's like Factorio and Satisfactory and some other games like that. Like, I, I get it. But these ones, <laughs> there's a few of these that are just straight up programming games, and I, uh, probably not. They're probably not human resource machine level of playable by me uh, either. So I figured it'd be kind of amusing to try. That could be amusing me. All right. Oh God. So I'm opening the manual and the manual has opened on the other screen. Which is not entirely helpful. Hello. The TIS-100 Tessellated Intelligence System Reference Manual, M. We're still in shock here from Uncle Randy's sudden passing. While we wait on a word from the examiner about the cause, we are coping as best we can. I've been occupying myself sorting through his things, especially his computers, of course. I took one of the uh, I took one look in the garage and it looks like a bunch of junk to me. I'll send some pictures when I get the chance. For now, this is the machine that was set up on his workbench when he died. Maybe you'll be able to figure out what he was doing with it. He would have liked to know someone was going to finish his work. Aunt uh, love Aunt Doris. So here it comes this experience. So the idea is I'm gonna poke at this. I'm probably not gonna get very far, but if you find it interesting, you can check out in the description. I figure these games are worth a signal boost, even if I can't get it probably. This is like this is genuinely a manual. And like it's relatively long, although these are not very long. These aren't the most complicated pages, admittedly. I like that there's little manual notes on them and stuff like that. This is actually probably comparable length to the manual that you used to defuse the bomb in uh, Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. Let's see. Let's look at the overview at least. That might be useful information. Looks like that stuff's crossed out though. Hmm. Or highlighted. I'm not actually, it might be highlighted. Tessellated Intelligence System is a massively parallel computer architecture comprised of non-uniformly interconnected heterogeneous nodes. I should zoom in on this a bit. There we go. The Tessellated intellect, uh, Intelligence System is ideal for applications requiring complex data stream processing such as automated financial trading, bulk data collection, and civilian behavioral analysis. Note. Notes like this one will appear in the manual to indicate scenarios requiring special attention and to refer to other documents that contain more information on the topic. Oh, additional documents. I like that. Look at the, look at the, look at the detail. Like there's a back side to these pages. Is that this page? It is. You can see this side of the page over there. They probably, huh. I think that they, like attention to detail wise, they probably actually printed these out on actual paper with all of the imperfections and scrapes and little tiny ink tails and the ink bleeding through the paper and everything like that, and then re-scanned it so it feels like a real document instead of just a, a PDF document because now it's uh, it's got the bleed through and everything like that. I just really like that detail. That's neat. I'm going to be completely out of my element here, aren't I? All right. Let's just see if I can even start the game. Before you begin, we strongly suggest that you print the TIS-100 reference manual. It is an important part of the TIS-100 experience and is essential to mastering the TIS-100 architecture. Well, I have it in a quick swap sort of setting, so it's gonna be, have to, have to be good enough for now to try to figure out what the hell is happening here. Self-test diagnosis, segment 150. Can I hit enter? I cannot. Okay, let's see here. Segment map. That's the segment map. Let's see, a, a arrow keys, WSD, no. Oh, I'm in trouble already. Okay. Well, whatever happened here, the, the leader of my entire leaderboard is Marty. Although, no, they're all tied. So Marty played this game uh, 
Bird has not played this game, and Andrew has not played this game. I thought that both of them might have played this game already. Import specification. Create new program. Hello. This is going to be interesting. Let's do run and see what happens. Nope, now it's idle. Okay, stop. So whatever it's doing is completely stopping. So the goal is to read a value from INX and write the value to out X. Here's I here's in X. And there's out X. Okay, so All these say is move up and down, and that's it. So I probably should add new commands here as we go. Okay, so let's check out the manual. Because I think we're going to have to actually f use that to find even the most basic information. <laughs> it just says, says save 66% on Shenzhen IO. Yeah, these games are on sale at the moment. Uh, a lot of stuff's just going to be open at the same time. This visual screen. All right. As you might imagine, this isn't the most less playable game. But I'm previewing it anyway. Oh yeah, we have a lot here. I want to see if I can find like a command instruction. Yeah, I don't. I don't need comment text right now. We're probably not going to have anything that complicated yet. Move eight ACC. Move left, right. Move nil. The literal value eight is written to the ACC register. So they say move anyway. That's interesting. Hmm. So this takes whatever's above this downward, whatever's above it downwards, whatever's above it downward. Gotcha. So I thought this was a problem I had to solve, but it looks like it's actually working at the moment. Or this is a tutorial, perhaps. I've never... I didn't know how... I thought I'd be lost in this game. I didn't think I would literally not even know whether or not I'm looking at a tutorial or a mission or what's happening. I didn't, I didn't realize that I could literally not tell what I was starting to do. <laughs> okay. So it looks like in X is going out here, out X is going there. So yeah, 51, 51, they all match. <coughs> so I guess it's already happening. So instead... What I'm seeing here might be the command step. So 51 generates here from in X. It goes down to here because of move up down, which is it takes whatever's up and moves it down. So 51 starts up here, then goes down here, then goes down here, then enters out X and then out X needs to print it over here. So I guess that happens next. Yeah. So now it's 51, 51. Now, and now, now 62 is being put in, now 62 is already down here already, well 16 is now being imported. So it keeps happening at that rate, like it's a little bit ahead. Gotcha. But it seems to not quit when it's done. So I guess it doesn't have a command to stop, because then it says idle percentages here, showing how much time is being wasted, I suppose. Gotcha. Turn to segment list. That's me creating a program. Alright. I think I've already hit a brick wall, I'm gonna be honest. I became an engineer because I wanted to make things. So now we're playing Shenzhen IO. But after I graduated, the reality of the world caught up with me. That's just not something we do in this country. Not anymore. It took a while, but eventually I realized it was true. I'd have to go somewhere else. Somewhere I could do what I was meant to do. Is he going to China? Concept operating system. I think this one might be more explicitly a video game prepared to receive players that want to play it. So, <laughs> cause holy shit, TIS was not. Ready to even introduce me to its ideas. 
I think I might have had to read the 30 page manual even to begin understanding it. It's literally the most Im Im impenetrable thing I've ever tried to play. Which, not, not even really complaining, I literally knew going in I wasn't going to get it, but I didn't realize how quick the brick wall would have come up. Data sheets. Ah. Okay, so that's also coming up as being a standalone thing. Let me... Okay. Ma Margie Fish. For the best Shenzhen IO experience, we highly recommend printing this manual, Assembling of Binder, so you can refer to as you play. I'll point out, this game has overwhelmingly positive reviews, and it's got like 1800. This is what that's based on, so goddamn. This, this is it encouraging me how to print out the system here. Huh. I guess you wouldn't include that page, because that's the instructions on how to print out the pages, which would be a silly thing to print out. Uh, or at least to include in the final system there. Language reference card. That's probably useful. I can probably make sense of that. Cool. Here we go. Alright, control panel. Concept mail. Alright, this is probably where the story is. Dear new employee, I can't read his name, so we're, we're yeah, we're, I think we're in China. I think. Thank you for joining Shenzhen. Uh, I also think that's a real area in China, specifically. Shenzhen Long Tech, Electronics Company Limited. We aim to become a world-leading company in the electronics industry and a respected brand with products in homes, offices, and public spaces across the world. Long Tech Electronics was founded on the following principles. Diligence. This means both diligence in your work and diligence in your life. When you encounter a problem, do not give up. Even if you are talented, or are not talented, by working at it every day, little by little, you can achieve the goal. Connections. The process of creating electronics and the process of creating connections between different components. And it's the same way, we do business by making connections with other people. Therefore, it is important to, to always be making connections in your work. I don't know, that's, the way that being in quotes makes it weirder. Salubriousness. Wow. Is that even a real word? An unhealthy mind creates an inefficient design. An unhealthy body builds a defective product. Follow correct eating correct behavior, and correct thinking to maximize your potential. Nothing off-putting about that phrasing at all. Please keep these principles in mind as you contribute to our efforts. Ah, fresh meat. Just kidding. Welcome to southern China. It's alright, I suppose, except for the heat, smog, lack of decent cheese here in Shenzhen. Still far better than any engineering gig I can find back in the UK, though. I'm assuming you ended up here for similar reasons, Carl. Yo, I heard you're our newest ace engineer who's going to kick ass and take names, am I right? No. <laughs> You've probably heard all about me already, but I'm the product guy who loves to find amazing opportunities to make deals happen. Let's do this. Greetings and welcome to the team. As you've already made, uh, as you've already been made aware, we are a on a major international expansion effort, and we are very eager to see you bring your skills and expertise to our company. Oh God, I can't. All right. Oh, he's saying my name in Chinese. I guess my name is David, and I brought you up to help Long Tech with this international push. Though I've only recently moved here from San Francisco, where I should point out, there is a very vibrant Chinatown. That's interesting for you to include. I also, I'm also really loving it so far. I, he didn't say also, I don't know why I said also. <laughs> it is truly fascinating to keep, uh, see a culture at once so ancient and modern from up close. I'm sure we will be working closely together to create many successful products. I don't know what you're saying. Hello, my name is Zhi Zhang. I am the chief staff engineer, your boss. I have not managed to meet many foreign workers before, so please understand if I make a mistake here or there. Anyhow, I will send you your first job shortly. When's, where's that coming up? Read the manual! Okay. This is my first job, right? Fake surveillance camera. Create a working design for this product to view histograms and leaderboards. 
This product is an imitation mock security camera. It has two blinking lights. The first light blinks in a regular pattern. The second light is an internet light. So it should be blinking in more random intermittent pattern to resemble data upload. As you will notice, the design is partially complete already. A previous engineer left, quit before the finishing the assignment. Note the timing diagrams in the verification tab. When you simulate, your outputs should match those expected values as indicated. Let the simulation run until it has passed all of the test cases to make sure that you have proper solution. I'm absolutely certain you'll do better than the last person. Alright. Immediately I'm doing something that somebody else quit when they were doing. Maybe that's the tr their way of trying to incentivize you to not quit. Open design. Here we go. Alright, so we have... Active and network are simple outputs connected to LEDs. Control the active and network outputs when fixed. Repeating signals as indicated in the verification tab. Okay, step. Okay. So here's the active input, which is blinking on and off at a specific rate. And then here's the network thing, which is supposed to blink on and off at these rates, which are more intermittent, but they still seem to be a really specific pattern. Yeah. And you can see the actual model of the camera here, which is kind of neat. So immediately this is a more visually dynamic game where you can... You have a universe in which stuff is happening. In this case, we're programming products, I believe, is like the core conceit of the game. And we're trying to make them match the expectation. So this is already alternating just fine at the right pattern. Now I need to try to... Oop, reset. I believe take this guy, plop it in here, and I need to set up the network to work. And hopefully figure out what I'm looking at here. So, MOV 0 to P0, slip 6, that must be time passaging? Time passaging, I do a good work, have bleh, bleh, words, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so those are the 6 intervals of time, maybe seconds, probably not seconds, something else. Alright, let's start by doing move 0, P0. SLP, instead of six, we're gonna do four. Can I attach P0 to that and then remove that? There you go. Now it doesn't have the mismatch anymore because it's going to the P0 port and that's the XO port. Cool. And we're gonna wait for four bits of time. Then do move 100 P0. SLP. Two. And we'll, then we need to do the other pattern. So move zero P zero uh, P zero SLP one. Move zero P zero. I am nailing it, man. <laughs> uh, one hundred P zero is what I meant to say. SLP 1. So now it'll be... It'll be at an empty state for 4, full for 2, then empty for 1, full for 1. And that'll hopefully... <laughs> hashtag why is this so hard? Oh, sad guy left and now he's sad. Okay. Oh, I put left... I just supposed to be a space there. There we go. So. If I nailed it, which I totally did, uh, it should work now. Yeah, look at that. So immediately this is more comprehensive, or comprehensible than the last game I tried to play because it gives you an example and you can run off that example and it has an interface that can communicate to me which thing I'm trying to do in the first place, which isn't always the case. Uh, that last one, I literally couldn't tell w where the levels were. So, good luck. Once again, uh, Marty has played this game because this is his jam. But unfortunately, I can't f I can't trick him into doing YouTube videos about these things. Otherwise, we'd be good. Let's return to the email. 
Thank you for your prompt work on the blinking lights. Looks okay. G. Cool. I did it. Shenzhen days. Why are we even here? Hi everyone, we've had a bunch of new signups this week, so let me reintroduce myself. I'm your host, Tilly Lu, and I run this little, this fun little mailing list for expats in Shenzhen. I'm here to demystify some aspects of life and culture here, along with the side helping of color commentary. Sometimes just the color commentary. Yeah, I get distracted. Today's topic is why the heck are we in Shenzhen? Let, no, really, like, why are we here at all? I don't mean in the immediate sense. Sure, we all have some job or some businessy thing to do, but let's talk about the larger factors at play. We're here because Shenzhen's one of the fastest growing cities in the world for the past few decades, ever since it was declared a special, a special uh, economic zone back in the 1980. We're here because it, it and really the entire Pearl River Delta region is a sprawling megacity wholly dedicated to trade, manufacturing, and services. A giant economic machine. We're here because what's possible in Shenzhen isn't possible in many other places in the world. Certainly not in the same scale and cost. So, where is all this capability headed? You know, in the future? Are we going to just make more stuff, more products and things until the world is buried in crap? I guess I'm asking, what is all this incredible growth for, anyway? I have some ideas, but that's a topic for another day. Yours, Tilly. We have narrative context, we have visual design. And this game was made one year later, because this guy this guy makes like one game every year, which is a hell of a rate. So they're usually really long too. Our factory floor is some examples of older equipment that require control signals to be amplified. We had a device to adjust signals for this type of machine, but recently it was broken, smashed. This is an appropriate project to teach you about inputs. Smash, hang on a second, what happens? Everyone okay? No need to worry. G. Can I go back a second? Please enjoy a game. <laughs> oh, it's a uh, the solid. It's Shenzhen Solitaire. I've heard about that. This apparently they must have been kind of okay because they sell it as a standalone. I probably would understand that more than this because it's Solitaire. <laughs> All right, control signal amplifier. Let's see if I can figure this one out. Control in is a simple input connected to factory equipment. Control out, simple output connected to factory equipment. The signal from control in should be multiplied by two and copied to control out. Mm-hmm. So anything that goes in has to be being put out as twice as big. Okay. Control in. Control out. Alright. Pin type mismatch. Oops. I apparently don't know how to tell what goes in and what goes out. Alright, pin type mismatch seems to have gone away. So, there we go. So. I think a core difference here is last time we were just outputting, now I need to have input. So now I need to figure out how to read information that's coming to me. It's time for things to get interesting. Okay. So basic instructions are nop, move, jump, slip, slicks. Arrhythmic instructions are add, subtract, multiply, yeah, register interval, I read register integer, so uh, if I can register, if I can figure out what a, if, if I can set a variable, then I can multiply it by two, by doing multiply, I guess however you reference a different entry, and then slash two. That's a bunch of... Why are emails in this folder? That's a little weird. 
Marital status? Oh, this is all the immersion stuff. This is this is your like citizenship stuff. Or not citizenship, but you're like your green card equivalent or whatever. Something like that. Place this page with the application notes section divider. Okay. Isn't that this? Hmm. Be sure to get enough sleep. An example circuit. Here we go. Following program generates a square wave with a simple pattern. Yeah, 100 at time intervals of three. So this is a, this is an example of what I did last time, but I figured it out based on the example they had in game. This time around, though, they didn't give me an in game example, so I need to figure it out from the manual probably. What I need is an equivalent of, yeah, something that has an input of some sort. The following circuit is a reference design for a touch activated light controller. When a user touches a cap uh, capacitive switch, the controller will detect the rising edge and advance the light to the next intensity level from off to 50% to 100% to back off. The circuit consists of two MC4000 microcontrollers that communicate over X bus. The first microcontroller reads from the capacitive switch on simple IO pin PO and sends either a 0 or 1 over X bus to the second microcontroller every time unit. I have to be careful because I have to both read this and also make sure I'm taking in whatever the hell I'm saying here. Because this is technical. This is technical. Okay. So this is the touch spot. Oh my god, this is this got complicated fast compared to the other example, huh? So I think this is detecting it and this is deciding what to do with the detection. Is that it detects it and then it tells the next chip what happened essentially. Based on that, I'm thinking I might need two of these if I go based on what they just what I just read. That might be what's going on here. We'll see. I'm still feeling this all out. Can I can I attach these kind of things to each other? Or is there there's no space? Is there? Okay, it locks to this grid. And I can't go over here. No, nope. whoa. That's a very particular system they got there. That's interesting. So you have to worry about the internal space of the model, too. Like, this is how much space I have to work with, so... There is no ability to put these two guys end-to-end -end because of the way that these guys are, are located. And I can't do it this way around. Ah. This way around either. Yeah. Like, they're end-to-end -end here, but then you can't get these connectors connected. So based on that, maybe I will only need to use one. Just need to find if I can figure out what to connect here. Um... The main thing is to find the information about what reads an input. Okay, so this one, it waits for an X bus value from the first microcontroller using the SLX instruction. So SLX XO will read that. That might be all I need, SLX. Go over here. <laughs> How do I get you to go away? There you go. Yeah. There you go. So, it was like this, right? When, before I had the error? Good. So. SLX EO must be on X bus pin.
I can't see. Okay. We seem to be stuck with that. The PO. SLXP. Oh. Must be on X bus pin. What does that mean? Damn it. <laughs> this let's play is a failure. This let's try. Uh. It would be nice if the game just told me what each term meant. SLX. Someone just says, this is an instruction you can use. SLXP. I'm like, cool. Why isn't that a... Why doesn't the... It have a queue? Here we go. Sleep until data is available to be read on the Xbus pin specified by the operand. Okay. Nope. Has no effect. That's a little weird. I have a sleep command. I just need a way to read data. I select as one. Maybe I can just try multiply just outright. So mul PO two. Alright, well I'm trying, man. Okay. Move PO. Damn it. So the pin registers are used when reading or writing to the pins at the microcontrollers. It would help if I understood what, how chips worked in the first place, probably, which I don't. Just say R? No. Yeah, this is I think I think this is immediately impenetrable to me. I just I just need exact I need examples. If I'm gonna try to learn a game like this, I just need like somebody else's like like the, la the way that the other one has like here's how I solved this thing using this language now do a different thing with that language then I can run with it but without that example I can't even begin to penetrate what's happening because like I've taken programming for a few semesters so like on a basic level I can figure out how to take the input and multiply it by two and then output it but if I can't figure out the language at all I'm totally fucked and I think the only way to do that would be to read the entire manual. So let's go play solitaire. Because I apparently I can't do this. No, let me play solitaire. Let me, let me play solitaire. I want to play sol solitaire. There we go. Yay. Anyway, sorry that this let's try is a disaster. I just wanted to preview these games a little bit and show you guys. Uh, if you know, if, if you, if this makes way more sense to you, then check them out in the description and support the developer and all that. They seem neat. I can't handle it, man. <laughs> I tried. So if you ever wondered why I don't have a let's play of these two games, this is more or less why. Uh, we, I might do Satisfactory, not Satisfactory, I'm already doing Satisfactory. I might do Infinifactory, Space Chem, and Opus Magnum eventually. 
The main concern is that when you look up them on how long to beat, it's like, yo, these games are like 40 hours long. And I'm like, oh God. I'm not sure if I'm ready to do a 100 episode playthrough of a puzzle game on my channel. <laughs> if people don't like that particular style of puzzle game, then that's three months of no other game types. That's a little rough, but I'll probably take the plunge on at least one of them eventually. All right, so to play Shenzhen Solitaire, to win, stack three suits from one to nine in the top right corner of the table. Cards can be stacked and moved in the center of the table, but only if they are of alternating suits and decreasing values. The free cells in the top left corner can store one card of any type. When all four dragons of a single type are exposed, they can all be permanently moved to an open free cell by pushing the corresponding button. Ah. So it seems like similar-ish to Solitaire, but not quite. In particular, there's, there's only three suits instead of four. I guess you have to be alternating suit. I don't remember if that was a mechanic before or not. Let's see here. I haven't played Solitaire for a while. What? Oh, right. Let's <laughs> straight up backwards. Good job, me. I used to like this a lot, though. It was meditative and all that. Nope, has to be alternating suits. So we gotta be careful here. We got these guys. Uh, are these all ones? Is that what these mean? No, that's a one. Uh oh. What does this mean? I don't know what these mean. <laughs> so that's a problem. What's that mean? What? Oh no. <laughs> the Chinese element is getting too confusing and I'm in trouble. All right. So that now we have an issue. Oh no, the solitaire is gonna be impenetrable too and I'm gonna embarrass myself. Cause I, I can't figure out what this, this is one of the things. Ka. Ka? Which one do I, these are the ones that these guys go into, right? The instructions mention those things. Those are the, those are the dragons. I feel like these inscriptions... I feel like that this the explanation of this mode could have been longer than it was. This is the entire tutorial, but I don't know what some of these things mean. So I'm immediately in trouble. No! It's solitaire! I thought this was my safe bastion where I could do things. I don't know what these things mean. I guess you can put it on a one. I can't move the, both of them together, so maybe they're not stacked correctly. I can't put them there, but I can put them... Th what? What is happening? Why did that go there? Is it just because I'm... I guess I'm starting at one? We might have an issue where I might be only half remembering how to play Solitaire. <laughs> uh, but... Yeah. Yeah. I have two of the- like, it's the same card, what does that mean? Why do I have two of the same card? That one's got a flower? <laughs> I'm fucked. I'm completely fucked. Oh. Yay. At least that's going on. Put the five over there, put the three over- yeah. What? I just don't know what the things that me are numbers mean. <laughs> They're all different, and they all say different things, and they could be anything. You can't, like, stack those. This is all ready to be on an 8. Put this 7 over here, and put all these over here. Boom. Look at this big old sequence we got here. We're making progress. There's a... 8, 7, 6. 8, 7. Whatever this means. What does this mean, by the way? Like, why is this... Why did the flower go up here? <laughs> oh, no! I'm doomed! 
they're probably the various face cards like the queen and the and the jack and everything but i don't know which one's which so i'm totally screwed can i continue like am i am i lost i genuinely don't know if i've lost or what Can I stack that on that or that on that? We'll just have to brute force our way into figuring out which one is the jack or whatever. But like I can't stack either of these on the other one. That boat's poorly for me. New game? <laughs> I got one of these guys again. There's supposed to be like a thing I did, right? With those. They said that their daughter wrote this game? Their daughter needs to write better directions to games. I can figure out what to do with them. I'm 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 calling it. I'm out. I can't do this. I don't. I don't know what's happening. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this entire video was a disaster, and I'm tempted to not upload it, but I'm gonna upload it because I've already invested like an hour into this process. So this was TIS 100, Shenzhen Solitaire, and Shenzhen IO. Those are all games you can buy individually, although Shenzhen Solitaire is inside of Shenzhen IO. It's also a separate purchase if you only want to play a new version of Solitaire and don't want to have the programming game around it. And I think that all or some of them are on sale at the moment, so feel free to check those out. I hope you enjoyed what was probably the most frustrating video to watch this year, uh, if you're somebody who has any idea what's happening. And if you don't know what's happening, you probably already stopped watching, so it's probably just those people. Uh, I gave it a good try a little bit, but yeah, this is a, this is for a particular audience, and I don't think I'm that person. But it looks neat, which is why I'm extra frustrated that I can't do it necessarily. See you guys next time.